Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So starting with this video, we'll understand what asynchronous apex is and we'll go with the definition what asynchronous apex is and then we'll also understand what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous apex and then moving forward, we'll understand how many types of asynchronous processes are there in Salesforce and then starting with each and every process, we'll understand what they are, why they are used and we'll also do a use case uh, with for each and every example so that you will have a better understanding of implementing any of those processes whenever required. All right. So let's just go ahead and get started. So this is the agenda for this session. So we'll understand that what is asynchronous process and why do we need it? Then we'll also see what are the types of asynchronous process that are available in Salesforce and we'll some, see some use cases. Basically, we'll try to understand things with some analogies. All right, so let's just go ahead and get started. So the first question is that what is asynchronous process, right? So any process, like, you know, first of all, I would like to say that do not get panicked if this is your first time, if you don't have much idea about even even about apex programming then don't worry about it i would suggest try to understand the concept with this one so at least you will have the basic understanding that what is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous so whenever actually you start working on asynchronous apex or processes you will have a better understanding and you will be able to figure out the difference between the to, and you will be also able to choose that like you know which one to actually go for in order for the like you know in order to choose the implementation process all right okay so asynchronous process means a process operating independently of all other processes that means that if there is any uh transaction or any task that is happening and if that task is actually uh like you know getting operated or like you know it is happening independently independently and it is not dependent on any other process or any other task, then you can call it as a asynchronous process. All right. That means that if one task is getting executed and uh, then and then if there are like, you know, other lined up tasks, task two, task three, task four and like, you know, so on. And any of these tasks does not depend on the other task to get the response. For example, if task one is getting executed, right. And uh like you know then now your task two started getting executed and if your task two is actually like you know not waiting for your task one to get completed or if your task three is actually not dependent on your task two to get completed then it doesn't have to be sequential right so if your task one is getting executed then you like you know your task two or task three or task four can also be queued and also can start processing right so basically none of these tasks are dependent on each other they have their own processing threads right and they will be executed independently of each other all right so that is the basic definition of asynchronous now i'm going to give you an example and i'll try to explain that like you know what does it uh like you know how how does this actually fit in a layman language and how can we apply the same logic to understand these two uh, processes in Salesforce, right? So synchronous process. So let's say I have these tasks, right? Let's say I have to go to a wedding, but before I go to a wedding, I need to take shower. I need to get ready and then I will go to a wedding, right? So basically, if you see the first task, right? Taking shower. So my presence is required in taking a shower, right? So I have to be available for taking the shower, right? And then getting ready. So I will, I can only get ready once I take the shower, okay? Because that is how the sequence should be. So once I am done taking the shower, I will get ready, right? And when I'm getting ready, then again, my presence is required. And then I have an invitation for the wedding. So I should be the one who should be going to attend the wedding, right? So again, my presence is required. And all these tasks are supposed to happen in a sequential manner, right? Taking a shower, getting ready, and then going to the wedding. So these kind of tasks, you can call a synchronous process, right? Because this one has to be executed first, then this one, and then this one. So basically, this one is dependent on the output of this one. And this one is dependent on the output of this one, right? So that is why it is sequential. Now let's just go to the move forward and see like, you know, what happens and how can actually like, you know, what change can happen to this process, which can actually like, you know, force us to go for the asynchronous processes. Okay. So let's say this one. Okay. Now let's just imagine 
let me just move it here okay all right so now let's say these were the three tasks that i had now let's say i have one more task in between i have to go to the laundry shop and i have to give some clothes for the laundry all right so now i know that laundry is going to take 60 minutes okay so let's say if i still try to do everything by synchronous process then how will it work so i will take the shower let's say i'm taking 20 minutes for the shower and then i will get ready i will take another 10 minutes and then i if i go to the laundry shop then the laundry shop is going to take 60 minutes for the laundry to get completed right so i will go to the laundry shop and i'll like you know just wait there for the laundry to get completed and i will have to wait there for 60 minutes right and then only i will go for the wedding but if you see the total time right 20 minutes and then 10 minutes 30 minutes then 90 minutes and then another uh 150 minutes right so if you see all the time right for this task was my presence really required no correct because my presence was not required because i just had to give the clothes to the laundry guy and then he would have done rest of the task right and i could have just collected the cloth so this particular task out of all these listed four tasks was not required for me to be present my interaction was not required right so this is something that can be pushed to the asynchronous apex now let's take the same example by asynchronous process okay so again like you know i have to take the shower get ready then what i can do is i can go to the laundry shop i can give the clothes for laundry and then i can go go and attend the wedding so wedding like for me going to the wedding and attending the wedding is going to take 60 minutes so while i am attending the wedding the laundry would be done right because the laundry is also taking 60 minutes so once i am done attending the wedding i can go back to the laundry shop and i can collect the clothes right so this is saving me a lot of time this is saving me 60 minutes right so 20 minutes for taking shower 10 minutes for getting ready and then i just went and uh, gave the clothes to laundry guy and then and then i went to the wedding right so while i was attending attending the wedding the laundry was done right so i saved 60 minutes so basically this task was not dependent on the output of any other task right and this did not require my interaction my input right so basically, if you talk in Salesforce terms, my interaction or user's interaction was not required to complete this task, right? So that is why I can just like, you know, push it for the asynchronous process, correct? So this is the basic difference between synchronous and asynchronous, okay? So if you are doing anything asynchronously, that means like, you know, you are just like, you know, initiating the job or you can, you can say that like, you know, you are just, it's like fire and forget kind of a setup, right? So you have started the process but you are not caring about the response that you will be getting right the this method or this process will get executed when the resource is available right for example let's in the same example you gave the clothes to the laundry shop but whenever like you know any person from the laundry shop is available then this task will be executed and you will get the response back okay so the same way in salesforce if you have any such task where you are interaction or user interaction or input is not required then that can be like you know put inside a asynchronous process and don't worry i am going to tell you like you know in the same video that what are the types of as asynchronous processes that are available in salesforce that you can use for such tasks and also those processes are categorized based on the kind of requirements that you would want to implement all right so Again, going back to the same thing. So any such task where user interaction is not required, you can put that under a synchronous process and that will get executed whenever the resource is available. All right. So that is the main difference between synchronous and asynchronous process. Asynchronous process doesn't wait for the response. All right. So let's just go to the so conclusion is that so in my previous in this example, right, the example that I just took this one. Right. So here anything that was actually not requiring my attention my input i was pushing that to asynchronous right here i pushed it to asynchronous right so similarly in salesforce if there is anything where user interaction is not required you can move that to asynchronous process for example let's say you have an account detail page okay now let's imagine that you have a roll-up summary on account detail page right a lookup roll-up summary okay now lookup roll-up summary is like you know uh like you know generally a complex process like you know it takes time to kind of like you know calculate and give you the result back basically just imagine if there is any field in your detail page or like you know whatever record like you know record you're working on if there is any field which requires 
which has a complex logic and which takes a little longer to kind of like you know calculate the result and give it back to you right so in any such kind of requirement right in any such kind of calculation where but that calculation or that formula or like you know whatever logic you have written for that particular field to get calculated you you your user input is not required in that okay so what you can do is that that process right that calculation you can that logic you can move under a synchronous process and that logic and process can keep on happening in the background while you can keep on working on the other part of the record okay let's say if you want to update anything or if you want to do any kind of like you know uh, work on your record you can actually continue working on that while that particular logic that you have put that complex logic for the field that calculation that you have put under any asynchronous process that can actually run in the background and give you the result back asynchronously on the page all right so such an example where interaction is not required for example or like you know any kind of other things like you know where let's say you don't need for the user to like you know actually click on a button or let's say if any text box where you actually need the user to enter something right if there is no such interaction required if it is just a calculation or anything that is like you know actually for example uh call outs right so let's say if i have an integration so let's say i have an account page and on my account page there are some fields for which i get the data from somewhere else from some let's, let's say like you know third party system right but let's say if i'm updating that particular account record in salesforce then it should not actually block me on like you know basically working on that account right it should or like you know creating an account so if there is any data which is actually coming from an external system right then it should everything should run in the background and whenever the data is available it should just start showing me on the record page correct so those kind of things where user interaction is not required right they can be actually those kind of logics can actually be written with the help of asynchronous process that are available in salesforce all right so and then there are a few like you know benefits of using asynchronous process so one of the benefits is that like you know for the one that we have just been talking about that it doesn't need to wait for the jobs to be like you know completed so if the user input is not required so if there are like you know multiple tasks then they can like you know run ind independently they are not dependent on each other okay they have their own like you know execution threads right and then there's something called higher limits so for example that in a single apex transaction you can only have like you know 100 socal queries but for example if you have written a asynchronous uh like you know if you written a method using asynchronous process right then that will actually give you a higher limit that will allow you to write to go for 200 socal queries instead all right so these these are like you know some kind of benefits that are there in asynchronous process so if you guys already know about governor limits then uh well and good but if you don't know about it i would suggest you to go back google about it or like you know just do some research about like you know what are the governing limits in salesforce for example let's say if you have like you know if, if you have a class and if you have some methods inside that class and in a single transaction there will be some kind of limit right to for your transaction to get completed and let's say if your transaction like you know in your transaction if all the processes are not getting completed then you will get a timeout error because if i mean you guys will already be knowing that salesforce is a multi-tenant architecture right so it is something like this uh for example let's say um if I talk about the governor limits, right, let's say if uh, just imagine like, you know, there's a building and in that building, there are different apartments, right? Uh, one building can have like, you know, four floors and every floor, let's say there are like, you know, two apartments, uh, two apartments on the ground floor, then two apartments on the first floor, then two on the second and two on the third. So likewise, there are like, you know, multiple apartments in the same building, but then there is there are shared services, right? For example, uh, water, okay? So in that single building, although there are multiple, like, you know, tenants, like, you know, different tenants, different apartments, but the there are shared resources, right? For example, water, okay? And then those shared resources, just imagine if that resource is just given to one apartment, like, you know, one only one person, like, you know, only one one apartment out of that whole building then what will happen to the other people right they will not get to access the resources the shared resources right so that is why there's a limit on like you know what kind of how much like you know is access is given to each and every tenant and that is how the like you know it's just a very layman language for like you know salesforce being a multi-tenant architecture so similarly like you know there are different companies there will be like you know multiple orgs 
right and that is how like you know uh, that is the reason because the resources are shared and that is the reason that there is a limit right you know governor limit on everything but let's say if you have um written any uh, logic or like you know any method or any anything any implementation you have written using the asynchronous process then it gets its own uh, like you know new governor limits okay it is not shared with any of the other methods or processes that you have like you know written in your like you know same class like you know whatever is getting executed in your single apex transaction if you have a asynchronous process in a synchronous method that you have written it will have its own governor limits so these are like you know some kind of benefits that are there when you are using asynchronous processes all right so um then in salesforce there are like you know four kind of asynchronous processes that are available the first one is future methods then we have something called queueable then there's something called batch apex and then we also have something such as schedule apex okay so these are four um uh, processes asynchronous processes that are available in salesforce so um uh, in the next videos i will like you know make a session on each and every topic so we'll discuss about what are future methods then a use case and we will also like you know write the code implement and see how it works same thing we would be doing for queueable batch apex and also schedule apex okay so you will have a very clear picture of like you know what are future methods why do we need it how to write a future method and how it will be executed and like you know such kind of questions will be like you know more clear to you and the same thing we would be doing for the other three processes all right so i will see you in the next session starting with the future methods all right so till then i would just only suggest you that if you did not get any like you know if you did not understand anything i would suggest you to only understand the basic difference of synchronous and asynchronous maybe you did not understand it at like you know at a very um, deep level but on a higher level all you have to like you know keep in mind is the basic concept and while we actually like you know um uh like you know we actually like you know go ahead and study about these like you know different processes i think it will be more clear to you that why we would be needing all these asynchronous processes in salesforce all right for what kind of requirements you would be needing asynchronous processes all right so i'll see you in the next session till then keep practice practicing and keep reading bye bye